Hi. Now in this video what I want to show you is how we solve first order differential equations that have this particular form dy by dx plus py equals q where p and q are functions of x. For example something like this equation here where we've got dy by dx minus 5y equals e to the power x and when I compare this to this particular format you can see that p is the minus 5 and q is e to the x and for a function of x it doesn't matter whether that function of x is a constant okay now normally we would first of all try and check out to see whether we can separate the variables in a first order differential equation but for this type of equation you can't so how do we go about solving this type of equation well there's a formula that we can use that gives us the general solution it's this one here and it looks maybe a bit horrendous at this stage but using it generally isn't too bad as I demonstrate if you were to click on this link here it will take you through the solution to this but if you go on my website examsolutions.net you'll see more links to other examples that are similar to this now the object of this video is to show you how we derive this equation it's not something you might necessarily need to be able to prove but uh, nonetheless I'll take you through it but certainly try and learn this particular equation so that you can apply it in situations like this okay so what we'll do is we'll just remove this for the time being and we'll start with uh, a general equation then let's say that we will just copy this down anyway let's say so if we have dy by dx okay plus py equals q then what I'm going to do is multiply throughout by some function of x okay we'll just call it f of x so what I'll say here is we'll multiply okay both sides of our equation okay by some function of x and the reason for doing this is it turns it into what we call an exact differential equation so if we do that we'll have f of x times dy by dx f of x multiplied by dy by dx and then we would have f of x py and then next we'd have f of x times q now the reason for doing this as I said was to turn it into an exact differential equation I'll call this line here one as you can see and by that I mean that if we were to differentiate I'll just say but if we were to differentiate with respect to x say this particular function f of x multiplied by y what would we get well we would need to use the product rule for something like this in other words we would write down say f of x and then we would multiply it by the differential of y with respect to x in other words that's dy by dx and then we would add to that the differential of f of x with respect to x which would write as f dash x or f prime x and we would multiply that by y so that's the product rule then let's number this equation here too now if I compare the left hand side LHS of equation 1 with the right hand side RHS of equation 2 then I notice that there is some similarity 
If we just copy down the left hand side of one, we've got f of x multiplied by dy by dx plus, and then we've got f of x py. Let's just write the f of x p in this color, f of x p, and then we've got the y. And this is identical to the right hand side of equation two. In other words, we've got f of x, again, multiplied by dy by dx. So the first two terms are exactly the same. And the second term is a term with y in, but we've got the f dash x. So let's just put f dash x in this color, and then we'll put the y in, all right? So hopefully you can see the terms match up. So what I see now is that f of x p must be exactly the same then as f dash x. And if I now divide both sides by f of x, I get that therefore f dash x over f of x must be equal to p. And if I integrate both sides with respect to x, it follows then that the integral of f dash x all divided by f of x, and if this is integrated with respect to x, it must be equal to the integral of p with respect to x. Now if we just come down here, now this type of integral should be familiar, where we have f dash x over f of x. It is the natural log of the denominator. So therefore we have the natural log of the mod of f of x is equal to the integral of p with respect to x. Now, if I antilog this, I therefore have that f of x must be equal to e to the power, the integral of p with respect to x. And we'll label this equation three. Now, e to the integral p dx is often referred to as an integrating factor. You'll see this cropping up a lot in any solution. So uh, we'll just put mark this in. So it's called the integrating factor. Okay, integrating factor. Now if we return back to equation two, if I was to substitute the left hand side of the equation into equation one, remember I've shown you that this is identical to this. So in other words, I can write that the differential with respect to x of f of x, y must be equal then to f of x times q. So if I was just to substitute that in, let's just write this in here, substitute the left hand side LHS of equation two into, okay, the left hand side of equation one, then what we have got is that the differential with respect to x of f of x times y, f of x multiplied by y, must be equal to f of x times q, f of x times q. Now that means that if I integrate both sides with respect to x, I therefore have f of x multiplied by y, okay, equals the integral of the right hand side with respect to x. The integral in other words of f of x times q integrated with respect to x. And now we can see that from equation three, f of x is equal to e to the integral p 
PDX, the integrating factor in other words. So if we just say that from 3, what we therefore get is that f of x, which is now e to the integral pdx, so we have e to the integral pdx, f of x is now multiplied by y, and it equals the integral of f of x, which is the integrating factor again, e to the integral pdx, multiplied by q and this is integrated with respect to x. And don't forget we would have a constant of integration, let's say plus c. So this is known as the general solution. And it's that formula that I showed you at the beginning of this tutorial which I would encourage you to learn. Because if you learn it, it just gives you a shortcut to the solution, the general solution for solving equations like this. So I hope it's given you some idea then how we get down to this equation. But as I said earlier, if you go on this link up here, you should be able to see how I've used this in solving this equation here and also another example as well. But the best place to see many of the links is on my website, examsolutions.net. So hopefully you'll take a look there. Okay?